Hi, Kevin from the Mathsaurus here, and in this video I'm going to go through the solutions to questions 3, 8, 13, 18 and 23 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020. Just before we get started, let me tell you about a course that I've made to help you prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge, links in the description below. This is a totally free course, and in it I'm going to walk you through 20 problems that I've designed specifically for this course. They're challenging problems that will help you prepare for maths challenges and really just help you enjoy maths beyond the sorts of things you're doing at school. For each question, you'll first see the question on the screen, so you can have a go at it and try to work out the answer. Then, if you're stuck or you want to think of different ways of solving the problem, you can watch my video Hint, and then you can have another go at solving the problem. Once you think you've got the answer, you can choose the answer from a selection of multiple choice options on the screen. It'll tell you whether you're right or wrong. Then you can either have another go at the question if you got it wrong, or watch my video Solution uh, if you are really stuck, or if you want to see if there's another way of solving the problem apart from the way that you did it. And it really is a totally free course, so I really hope you'll sign up below and work through these problems with me. Let me show you the solutions to questions 3, 8, 13, 18 and 23 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020. So we want to know how many of these shapes have rotational symmetry of order 2. That means that when I rotate the shape, uh, there'll be two times in a full rotation where it looks the same. So every shape has at least rotational symmetry order 1, because when I come all the way back to the start, um, you know, it, it looks the same as where it is at the start. So for rotational symmetry of order 2, there's got to be one other time uh, when I do that rotation uh, that it looks the same as when it starts. Now I've set up the page here so I can just rotate them. So on the first one here, you see if I rotate this, when I go halfway around it looks exactly the same. So that one does have rotational symmetry of order 2. In the second one, um, if I go around when it's halfway, these lines are at the bottom rather than the top, so that one doesn't have rotational symmetry of order 2. Um, for this one, again, if I rotate it, that, that bottom line there is going to end up at the top instead of the bottom. Uh, for this one, when I rotate it halfway around, ah, yeah, look, that line ends up the same way around, and then I go the full way around. So that one has rotational symmetry of order 2, and the last one, when I get halfway around, it looks the same. And again, when I'm back at the start, so that one has rotational symmetry of order 2 as well. So it was this one, this one, and this one. And the answer, the question is how many of them have order 2? So the answer is 3C. So it says Wesley has a grid of 6 cells. He wants to colour 2 of the cells black. So the 2 black cells share a vertex but not a side. How many ways can he do this? So sharing a vertex but not a side means something like this, right? So it could be these two here, right? They share this vertex. A vertex is a corner and then but they don't have a side in common here. So I can do those two, um, but I couldn't do those two because they have a side in common. Right, so let's start writing these down and let's just find, um, now to make sure we get them all, I'm gonna go through systematically and start with everything that I can make with the first square and then I'll know, I've, and then the next one, and then I'll know I've got them all if I do them systematically. I'll show you what I mean. So there's one possibility, right? I'm gonna set, label those as a one. Those two could go together. Right, now there's nothing else that can go with this top left square, right, because the other ones it would share a, a side with. Okay, so if I look at the second square here, again, it shares a side with these two, it could, uh, but uh, so we could share this vertex with this square, and that would be here, so that would be another option, um, or it could go in the other direction here, so let me label that as 3 and 3. Okay, so that's options 1, 2, and 3. Now if I look at this one that I've already labeled 2 here, uh, that one could also go with the one underneath it here, so let's label that with, with as option four, but there's nothing else apart from the one we've already looked at. Uh, and then if I look at this middle square, well, um, that can go with the one it's already gone with, but everything else it shares a side with, so there's no more options there. And then this final one here uh, could also go with this one, and then we can see we've exhausted all of the possibilities, and so the answer is D5. Notice how doing it systematically by starting at the top and working down in order there, I'm really confident that I've got them all and that there aren't any more. Here we're told the mean of four positive integers is five and the median of the integers is six and we want to know what's the mean of the largest and the smallest of the integers. Now when you've got a list of four numbers, right, this isn't, these aren't the actual numbers, but let's say it was four, uh, 11, 17 and 23, but the median of them you take the average of the middle two, because there is no middle value, right? So I have to work out 11 plus 17 over two here and get that 14 is the median. So actually, the median of the integers is the mean of the middle two numbers, right? So if I've got A, B, C, and D, 
the median is the mean of um, B and C, uh, but it's also the mean of B and C. So that means that uh, B and C must add together to give 12, and then 12 divided by 2 would be 6, right? So we've got B plus C is 12, but the mean of all of the integers is 5, so that would mean that A plus B plus C plus D must be 20, because that's 4 times 5, right? If the mean is 5, the total is 4 times 5. So that must mean that the other two, A and D, must add together to give 8, because the middle two add together to give 12, and in total you've got 20. So if they add together to give 8, their mean is uh, 8 divided by 2, which is 4, and so the answer is B, 4. How many two-digit primes have both of their digits not prime? Okay, so uh, which digits are not prime? Well, 1 is not prime, uh, 2 is, 3 is, 4 is not prime, 5 is prime, 6 is not, 7 is prime, 8 is not, and 9 is not. So it's actually saying how many two-digit primes can we make up uh, from these numbers? So let's narrow down our search a little bit. And remember, a two-digit prime um, is... Uh, we've only got to check whether 2, 3, 5, and 7 are factors or not. I go through that in detail about why that's true in the full course, Go for Gold in the Junior Maths Challenge. So I'm just going to check these out here. So I'm going to look at the uh, one things that start with 1 first. So 1, then something. Okay, uh, so it could... And I, can, I can only choose between these. Now 11 is prime, 14 is not, 16 is not, uh, 18 is not, uh, and 19 is prime. Okay, then I look at things that could be 4 something. 41 is a candidate to be prime, doesn't have 2 as a factor or 5, and its digit sum 4 plus 1 is 5, so it's not a multiple of 3, so it is prime. Maybe you also just know it's prime. Um, anything that ends in an even number I can always rule out, of course, as well, right? So I really only have to check, you know, uh, the things that end in 1 or 9 here, right? So it's 49 prime. Well, 49 is 7 times 7, so that's not prime. So then I just check the things that are 6. 6 something, so I just need to check 61 and 69. 69 is obviously a multiple of 3 here, um, and 61 is prime because, again, it doesn't have 2, 3, or 5 as a factor. If I look at the 8x's, that's 81, well, that's 9 squared, so definitely not that. Um, and uh, 89 here, again, that doesn't have uh, 2, 3, 5, or 7. Uh, as a factor here, and you can just check all of those, right, I should have checked 7 for 61 as well, but it's obviously not a multiple of 7, uh, so that's a prime, and then for 9x, uh, I've got to think, well, is 91 um, a prime that is, uh, doesn't have 2, 3, or 5 as a factor, but it is 7 times 13, so that's not prime, and 99 is 3 times 33, so that's not prime, so... Uh, we've exhaustively searched them all, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so the answer is B, 5. In the answer I just gave, by the way, I didn't include the number 0, and I just wanted to add a little uh, addition here to say why that wasn't the case. Of course, um, 0 is also a, a digit that's uh, not prime, so you could include it in a, t in a number if you wanted to, but clearly no number that starts or ends with a 0 can be prime, so it's not going to be in any of the answers, which is why I ignored it, okay? 23, it says there's more than one integer greater than 1 that leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by each of the four, four small, smallest primes. So we need to remember what those are. That's 2, 3, 5, and 7. Remember, 1 is not a prime. And uh, it says, what's the difference between the two smallest such integers that are 1 more than a greater, you know, that, are, uh, that leave a remainder of 1 when divided by uh, each of these? So because these numbers don't have anything in common, the smallest number this is going to be true for is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 plus 1, okay? Um, you see that if I divide this number by 7, um, then, like, this bit is a multiple of 7, so I get an exact, I'd get an exact uh, division when dividing that by 7. So if I add 1 to it, then I'd get a remainder when dividing by 7. And you can make that argument for 2, 3, and 5 as well. If I divide it by 2 here, this is, well, this is an exact multiple of 2, so I'll just get this as the remainder. So that's how we'd construct this. 2 times 3 times 5 uh, times 7 is 6 times 5 is 30, times 7 is 210, so this is 210 plus 1, right, so that's 211. Well, the next number that this would be true of would just be, not double the whole number, but if I did two lots of 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, I could make the same argument. This is now the next thing that's a multiple of 2, 3, 5, and 7, so if I add 1 to it, 
it's the next thing that leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by all of them. So you can either just jump now and say, well, the answer is 210 because this is 210 bigger than this one, or you could actually write down that this is um, 421 and then 221 minus 211 is 210. But either way, the answer is B, 210. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that the best way to prepare would be to I'll click the link below and to sign up for my totally free online course.